This program is dedicated to those that paid for their lives at the hands of the state. Welcome to another edition of Silent Voices. Today we have a very special guest. Her case is out of Oakland County, Michigan. And Brian sat down and interviewed her. Here is Jessica Jevedon. Today's guest is Jeff Jessica Jevedon. She had her five children removed and her parental rights terminated. And we'd like to talk to her and get her story about what happened. Hello, Jessica. Hi. Uh, first, uh, when was uh, when were your children removed? Um, August twenty fourth, two thousand and six. Uh, when they were removed, did, did the CPS worker um, say anything to you about why they were being taken? All she would tell me was that there were back to back phone calls coming into CPS, ap approximately three days worth of them, and that there was imminent danger to the children, claiming bruises and whatnot on the children. Um, however, there, were, there was no preponderance of evidence. There was no bruises on my children whatsoever. Okay, so, um, so after they, they were taken, you found out that what the CPS worker uh, said was not true? Can you, can, you explain, well, can you explain how you found out that this wasn't true? Or? I actually found out recently that her report was not accurate. See, I wasn't allowed access to any of these records back in 2006, 2007, and um, also 2008 when my case was um, proceeding in the courts. Uh, they kept telling me I didn't have the right to these files, even though Michigan statute says differently. And um, recently, I was, however, able to obtain my Child Protective Services records along with some police documentations um, which I'll explain that part later. But the uh, Child Protective Services reports indicate that there was not a phone call made to Child Protective Services for three months prior to the removal of my children. Not to mention my children were removed after 5 o'clock p.m., which is against Michigan statutes. Um, court has to be in session to be able to validate the authenticity of the court order. And also there has to be a judge's signature in ink and legible by the judge and it cannot be a rubber stamp. My court order did not have anything on it other than the CPS worker's uh, signature. And she was accompanied by two cars loaded with Hazel Park Police Department. Hmm. Uh, what about the uh, allegations of bruises on the children? Um, the CPS report indicated or alleged that there were bruises on my children that were um, given or that was uh, inflicted upon them by my ex. And um, that was not true because he was not residing in the home with us. He didn't have contact with any of the three older kids. He had contact with the youngest um, child very rarely because he was my abuser and I was not comfortable, my, comfortable myself around him. So I didn't allow him around the three older ones once I got away from him. Hmm. Uh, well, and uh, well, prior to the children being removed, um, did you ever uh, abuse or neglect your children? No, not in any fashion. My children are the most important thing to me. Um, I grew up taking care of other people's kids. So people kind of called me like a, a bread mother and when I had my own kids, I experienced different forms of abuse growing up and I knew what not to do with my children and what, how to appropriately discipline my children. And, um, but there were allegations 
uh, that spawned from a um, a feud, I guess you could say, between me and the first three kids' father when we were battling back and forth for custody of the oldest. But um, those allegations were all unfounded and proven to be false. The protective service workers involved in those allegations actually gave me information to prosecute him legally for harassing me through a government agency. Hmm. Um, so you did talk about, uh, you brought up the issue of this abusive relationship. Yes. Can, can you uh, explain briefly uh, what that entailed for the viewers? Yes. Um, I was involved in two abusive relationships. The first one was with my first three kids' father. Um, it was easier for me to leave that man because I didn't have, other than the children, I didn't have prior ties to him. Um, what I mean by that is my second abuser grew up together. I was with him from the age of 13 to 17 and um, I was with him at a time in my life where I was very, uh, I guess you could say fragile or um, very broken. Um, and he was my protector. Uh, he didn't allow my parents to browbeat me in front of him. He didn't allow anyone to hit me in front of him. Um, he basically held me up on a pedestal. And when we became adults and we moved in together, uh, he began abusing me. And it was more terrifying with him than it was with Devin within any measure because that was a person I fully trusted with everything, me, my kids, m our lives, and he broke us. <laughs> Very slowly, but broke us. <laughs> um, at any time, did you seek some kind of legal help to try to stop the abuse or get a restraining order or put the abuser in jail? Or um, Several times I did try to uh, contact authorities, but the authorities these days, they say that if your name is on a piece of mail or if your ID says that address or if uh, they stay more than 24 hours in your home, they basically have the right to kick down your door to get back in because you gave them legal residency in your home. So I had no recourse whatsoever. Um, I sought family assistance. Um, anytime my family wanted to come over and try to help out. They wanted to instigate a fight in front of the kids and that was not appropriate either. Um, so eventually between the legal help, the legal system and um, you know my family, I basically started quieting myself about it. My voice became silent. I became one of the thousands in America who behind closed doors are getting beaten and out in the public you wouldn't know it. And the courts actually reinforced the silence because they gagged me uh, during the reunification process mm. about the abuse. Um, is, can you tell us anything else about some of the uh, allegations that were brought uh, during the time when the children were uh, removed? Um, the allegations that they, the CPS worker used when she uh, came in and um, bombarded us and took my children from my home, th there were, I want to say, approximately 30 of them. And they spawned anywhere from 1997, before I even had kids, to um, the current time frame. Some of them uh, referred back to my daughter's molestation. Uh, they charged me with failure to protect her. And this was six months after it even happened. Um, there was a failure to protect my daughter from abuse from her father, and I fought for years in Wayne County court systems to keep her from her father because of those um, issues. We had uh, bruises and markings on uh, tape, camcorder, and also uh, documentation at Children's Hospital, and also Van Buren Police Department was pursuing a criminal case against him. and. Uh, that actually didn't go through because he wouldn't leave her alone during the forensic interrogation. So it made her a viable witness because she could, wouldn't um, corroborate her own story. So um, 
they couldn't press that issue any further with him. But during my reunification process and adjudication and everything, the courts actually used that against me, even though I pursued legal um, actions against him for abusing my children. And um, I see some other of the allegations. Uh, medical neglect. They said that I medically neglected my second oldest by um, not obtaining the Pediasure um, as prescribed by his doctor. Um, he was considered a failure to thrive, but not with me, with um, food, I guess you would say. He wanted more dairy products than anything else, and I had to make up funny, silly little games in order to get him to eat anything healthy for him. And the doctors just, at, even at almost at three years old, they kept telling me, oh, just keep giving him the bottle. Oh, he doesn't want to potty train? Well, just leave him in diapers, you know? And I wasn't wanting to limit my child. I wanted him to understand these are things that he needs to do so that he can be healthy. And this thing in a diaper is not, you know, you're three years old and you have to start learning how to use the potty because you're a big boy and you're about to go to school and everything now. And, um, because I didn't, I wasn't financially able to get the Pediasure, they stigmatized me with medical neglect. And, um, but I was trying to get the Pediasure underneath uh, Medicaid because it was a prescription. And um, before I could get the approval through Medicaid, they actually um, came in and took my kids. So it was only about, a, um, maybe about a month or two before they took my kids that he was even prescribed the Pediasure. Um, now, were there some allegations that came after the, uh, your uh, parental rights were terminated? It wasn't after the rights were terminated. It was during the reunification process. Um, and that I was actually um, given a copy of that incident report on 5-31-2013. I was not entitled to this report during the time of reunification. And these are allegations that my aunt, my maternal aunt, uh, who is also the, was the foster care parent to my children and now the adoptive mother of all five of my children. In this report, it states that she wanted to keep my children so badly in permanent custody that she tried to put me in prison on a second degree uh, criminal sexual conduct charge. And um, sh she didn't only take my kids to one care house interview and pursue it in one county, she took my children to four care house interviews. The first allegation went through Hazel Park um, with Detective Grigsby. And um, during that uh, care house interview, he asked her if um, there was any questions that he had about the, or that she had about the process. And she stated that she had one question and then asked Detective Grigsby if the interviewers would know if Taya would if Taya had been coached on what to say. And in the report, it also says that Grigsby was stated that he was taken aback by the question because he did feel as if Taya had been coached on what to say. Um, she then t changed the time frame of when it occurred, supposedly, and made it into a time frame of when I resided in Warren, Michigan. So then Warren PD picked up the case. They went through, you know, uh, my children had to go through another two care house interviews. In all four care house interviews, never once did my children's stories match. Never once did they say words that a child would say. Um, and uh, it also says in this report, you know, it states that I brought in numerous things to, to prove that I was doing the correct things in order to get my kids back. Um, and that I recognized there was an issue with me being with an abusive person. Um, but all in all, they knew prior to me coming into this second um, interrogation that I was innocent because just based off of what my kids said. Um, they also said things such as, um, uh, dur also during the interview, I stated my mom is not ready for kids yet. Mind you, she was only six and a half, seven years old at this time. Um, and then she go out, goes on to say she is not a good mom yet, that this is what her aunt thinks too. 
Her aunt has temporary custody and wants to keep custody permanently. And it just, um, at the end of it, it says request to close. Undersigned respectfully request to close this complaint as an unfounded and false report. And I am currently seeking someone to help me go after my aunt legally for doing this to me. Yes, that, that doesn't sound like something a six and a half year old child is going to say, really. Um, now, during the reunification process that takes, uh, you might be able to explain this a little bit, how many months it takes or years, uh, were you, during that time, uh, were you diagnosed with some kind of psychological condition? Um, well, the reunification process can take anywhere up to 18 to 24 months, depending on your case and the situation. Um, during my process, the courts deemed me uh, psychologically disabled. They uh, said that I had an underlying mental health condition. However, in 1997, I was hit by an oncoming vehicle as a pedestrian at 40 miles an hour. And um, after 15 years of digging at my own legal case pertaining to my auto accident, I have uh, been able to get the insurance company to pay for my rehabilitation services now. And as a result, I have $40,000 in neuropsychological testing that took a span of 10 days, eight hours a day that says my actual diagnosis is frontal lobe damage syndrome, which is a direct result of the car accident. I am not aggressive. I am not violent. Um, if anything, once I learn the correct path of things, I will stay on that path because of the brain injury. So mm -hmm. if, let's just say, prior to the accident, after the accident, I'm a good parent, I'm not going to deviate. You know, uh, if I have a set schedule of taking medications or giving my kids medications. I'm not going to devi deviate from that. If I know hitting is wrong, I'm not going to deviate from that. Um, it's just basically with this diagnosis, you can't teach an old dog new, tri new tricks. <laughs> so um, I am, however, learning different things during my rehabilitation now, how to recognize the abusiveness, um, how to get away from it faster, and how to utilize the word no. <laughs> but. So, so what was the actual diagnosis that the court? Uh, you the know, court, had, all they said it? was underlying mental health condition. Now, do you think you actually had that, or no. is that just kind of a, a made-up, fabricated thing? That's a made-up, fabricated thing. Um, I, during the time of the court proceedings, they had me on antipsychotropics because of whatever diagnosis they were falsifying, and as of today's date, I am not on any antipsychotropics. I'm not on, a, on any anxiety medications. I'm on all neurological medications to offset the migraines and the brain injury. Mm -hmm. um, now, also during the reunification process, were you uh, coerced in any way yes. on, you know, to do things that you might consider weren't in your in your children's best interest? Yes, mm -hmm. um, the foster care worker from Oakland County uh, Department of Human Services. He told me, once I was already away from my abuser for approximately, I want to say about nine months, he uh, told me in order to prove a healthy two-parent household and in order to get the children back faster, rectify things with your abuser and make things better and, and you'll get the kids home faster. Well, by me doing so, I got pregnant with my last child. He ended up putting me in the hospital um, by beating me up again. Hazel Park uh, prosecutor dropped those charges against him and the courts utilized that against me to further along the termination proceedings. Mm -hmm. um, now, can you give us the, the date of your termination and have you seen your children since that time? Um, my termination was July 20, it was like 27th or 28th, 2008. And my appeals went through um, April 2009, which was, of course, denied. And um, I have seen my kids on two different occasions since the termination was upheld and my aunt adopted my children. The first time, I did not take a camera with me because I didn't want to offend anyone. I wanted to respect the boundaries of the adoption. 
and I didn't want to scare my kids. Um, but on the second occasion, I did take my camera with me, and uh, that was a year uh, separated. Um, the first time I saw my kids was in August of 2011. The second time I saw my kids was in July of 2012. And um, on the second occasion, like I said, I, I did take a camera, but I let my kids play with the camera. So in essence, I got my pictures, so I had something to remember them by. And, um, but at the same time, I was collecting proof because my aunt was sitting there laughing and joking along with us and everybody was having a good time playing like we never skipped a beat with each other. But I'm such a threat that she made a second degree CSC claim on me. I'm not understanding that actually. Huh? Okay. So you don't get to see your children very often. It sounds no. it's like it's it's, a, it's only when she yeah. dangles that. It's like I'm a puppy and she dangles the puppy treat right over my head and my kids are the treat and you know, it's like a game to her, almost. Now, you said your, your aunt now has, um, uh, has adopted your children. Yes. Do you think that uh, she had any um, uh, influence on actually getting your parental rights terminated? I do fully. I fully believe she had uh, a lot to do with my rights being terminated. She had her own adoption attorney involved the third month into our proceedings, the GAL and the foster care worker from Oakland County all became friends with her on Facebook, which is also a conflict of interest and an ethical violation. And they should have therefore removed themselves from the case, but they did not. Um, and then uh, in addition to that, you know, like I said, she had her own adoption attorney involved in the case and pushing for adoption since three months into it. Um, other things such as she had my kids calling her mommy from almost day one of them being gone. Mm -hmm. um, uh, now one of the things that we've seen quite a bit of is this uh, uh, this national social security title 4E uh, funding program. Um, uh, are you aware of that program? Yes I am um, mm -hmm. and I fully believe that in cases such as mine especially when um, mm -hmm. it's, a, it's, it's a case When it's a case such of that, uh, like mine, I fully believe that Title IV funding plays a big part in it, where there is no preponderance of evidence of abuse. Um, all of these allegations are unsubstantiated. I've even been removed off of the uh, Child Abuse Neglect Registry for two of the four um, registry uh, reasons or incident reports. Um, but the adoption funding and the uh, foster care funding plays a big part in what goes on in the parental right termination proceedings or reunification proceedings. And in my case, I fully believe um, both parties were benefiting from it, not just the court system, but my aunt's family was benefiting from it. Oh, you think uh, your aunt's family also received some of this uh, funding? Yes, okay. I do. Um, I believe that she collects uh, foster care funding, or the uh, foster care funding, and then the adoption incentive funding after she adopted them. Mm -hmm. um, is there anything else you'd like to add, you know, on, on your behalf or on behalf of your children to uh, tell the viewers? Mm -hmm. I want my kids to know every single day that you have been gone. It has not been for nothing. I have worked every day to bring you back home. I don't want you to believe all of the lies that people are telling you or what you might read. I want you to seek me out when you're old enough or able to. I want you to ask me questions. I will never lie to you guys. And I will always welcome you guys back, no matter how old you are. And I just want all of you guys to know that I love you with all of my heart. Okay. Um, well, I think we've probably covered your case uh, pretty well, and even in this brief amount of time. Um, uh, you know, if there is anything, is, is there 
Anything else that you'd uh, like to add just at the, at the last moment? Okay. Oh, oh, yes, uh, one more thing. Uh, to read more about my story uh, so that you can have the full account of everything that happened, please go to www.time, the number two, fight, the number four, our parental rights, dot Weebly, W-E-E-B-L-Y dot com. My story is on there and I'm collecting other stories from all across the nation of other parents going through this. I'm not just an advocate for myself, but I'm an advocate for every single parent out there going through things like this. Okay, Jessica, well, thank you very much for being on the um, uh, Silent Voices show this week. Thanks. Hello, I'm a child protective worker. I want to thank you for watching the program tonight. You can tune in next week at the same time and view another edition of Silent Voices. I want to remind everybody that we have Citizens for Parental Rights meetings right here at the studio at WKTV, 5261 Clyde Park Avenue, right here in Wyoming, Michigan. That's every third Monday from 7 to 9 p.m. Hope you can come out and join us. I also, if uh, you like to join a social network, you can join our network at miparentalrights.ning.com. That's miparentalrights.ning.com. If you'd like to be a guest on this program or send us an email with some comments, you can send that to us at miparentalrights at gmail.com. That's miparentalrightsgmail.com. Once again, thank you for watching the program. And remember, until next time, your voice can make the difference.